God's help today, we hope to solve some confusion over the November 8th vote so you know what to do according to God's Word. Amen? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. So if you're ready to tune in and hear what God has to say, Amen. it's time. Amen. This was written in A.D. 200. Tertullian was a Presbyterian minister, evangelist, historian. A lot of writings of his agree with the writings of Paul. He followed up in God's Word. Here's what he said. Give us your testimony, mothers. Tell us then whether you feel in your embryo within you any vital force other than yourself with which your stomach trembles, your sides shake, your entire womb throbs, and the burden within you constantly changes positions. Are there moments of joy to you? Are you not one with God and the child as to what affects you, affects your child, as to the diet, your exercise, your sickness, your trauma? Would you, by cruel necessity, Put this gift from God to death by surgeon's tools that opens up the uterus, keeps it open with an angular blade by which the limbs of this moving, living infant is dissected. Then with a covered hook, remove the very arms that moved, the hand that made a fist, and the leg that kicked in your womb, and the face that smiled in your womb. Jeremiah 1 5. God speaking to the prophet Jeremiah. He said, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Amen. Before you came out of the womb, I sanctified thee. Yeah. I ordained thee a prophet to the nations. In other words, God has a plan for every human being that's ever been placed in the womb. Amen. It is not our right to remove that child. Amen. At our discretion, Amen. at our laziness, at our sinful acts. Right. It's not ours to decide. Amen. But we've been given a rare opportunity in the state of Kentucky. No other state in the entire union has the opportunity that we have amongst all the states. We're the only one that has this constitutional option available to us coming up November the 8th. And we're going to share about that today so that you can understand more about this. I'm compelled that we need to do this. Yeah. The church needs to be the first one to stand. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And the last one to still be standing when it's all said and done. Yeah. But listen, listen how this came about. In the year of 1879, in other words, how did we get here? Kentucky's High Court recognizes the common law crime of abortion. But then in 1910, the Kentucky General Assembly prohibits abortion at any stage of pregnancy except to save the mother's life. But then in 1973, when Roe versus Wade kicked in, Kentucky's High Court unanimously rejects the constitutional challenge to Kentucky outlawing abortions, and that was Roe versus Wade. Roe versus Wade in 1973, Kentucky's High Court begrudgingly acknowledges it is compelled to follow Roe versus Wade. But justices say the matter belongs to the Kentucky General Assembly. And in 1974, Kentucky General Assembly amends the abortion law to comply with Roe versus Wade. But these next words are very important. But declares the intent to fully restore the policy to the Commonwealth. And that leads to where that we are at today at least 296,035 unborn children have been killed since 1973. The U.S. Supreme Court declares it is time to heed the Constitution and return the issue of abortion to the people's elected representatives. Thank God for the overturning of Roe versus Wade today. Amen. There is an activist, a Louisville judge, that's battling all these things that is against Christianity. So yes, keep this in mind, vote yes for life, the constitutional amendment that's on the ballot. Now let's look at some things 
that we need to see today. Again, Kentucky is the only state with a pro-life constitutional amendment on the November 8th ballot. There's no other state in the union but ours. On election day, I'm just going to read some of this. On election day, November 8th, Kentuckians for the first time ever will have the opportunity to directly vote to protect the sanctity of vulnerable human life. <coughs> Safeguard our tax dollars from paying for the horrors of abortion. The Yes for Life Constitutional Amendment, Amendment 2, will appear at the very end of every Kentucky ballot. Planned Parenthood and its radical pro-abortion allies outside Kentucky have dumped more than $3 million into Kentucky to defeat Amendment 2. This billion-dollar abortion industry wants to defeat our pro-life amendment using highly deceptive ads containing outright lies so they can empower activist judges to strike down our pro-life laws and resume killing Kentucky's unborn children for profit. In other words, they want taxpayers to pay for it. Deuteronomy 27, 25 says this, Cursed be he that takes a reward, or in other words, that word reward means a donation. Cursed is he that takes a donation to slay an innocent person. And all the people shall say, Amen. Amen. Is there any, listen to me, is there any more innocent? I weep for our children. Is there any more innocent than the child in the womb? No. Is there? No. no. <laughs> Hosea 13, 16. That Samaria shall become desolate, for she's rebelled against her God. They'll fall by the sword. You think abortion's a brand new thing? This thing's thousands of years old. Their infants shall be dashed into pieces, and their women with child will be ripped up. As Terry said a while ago, I'm thankful for the freedom that we have. Amen. All the griping and the fussing that we do about all the conditions that the world is in, and we've got such a rare opportunity here in Kentucky to do something that nobody else has the opportunity to do. <coughs> it's time to quit fussing and griping, church, and do something about this. Yeah. Every person here that's able to vote, you should vote. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. You should vote. That's the a, that's a, that's a word that you have, and this is a gift from God to give us this opportunity to not be fooled anymore. Now, an explanation a little bit about this amendment in case you have questions. So, this amendment, in other words, what is the Yes for Life constitutional amendment? The amendment will affirm that it's no, there is no right to abortion or the funding of abortion in Kentucky's Constitution. This will prevent state judges from asserting their own preferences over the will of legislators and us, the voters. Why is the life constitutional amendment needed. Kentucky's pro-life laws are under attack by the pro-abortion industry and an activist state job, state judge for rule. He is asserting his own abortion on demand extremism over the will of the people. The Yes for Life Amendment protects our pro-life laws from activist state judges. Did you know we need to even be careful about who we elect locally? Yeah. Does everybody understand that? Yeah. So they may end up in a position to be a state judge someday, not just a county judge. Does the Yes for Life Amendment threaten women's access to health care, contraception, or fertility treatment? No. This is fear-mongering by the pro-abortion activists. Kentucky's pro-life law explicitly allows procedures medically necessary to protect a mother's life and life-sustaining organs. Here's who's lifted, listed heavily in this fight. The Yes for Life Alliance, the Sisters for Life, the Family Foundation, the Catholic Conference of Kentucky, and I'm very proud to say the Kentucky Baptist Convention, yeah. and the Commonwealth Policy Center. Exodus 20, 13 said, Thou shalt not kill. 
Exodus 23, 7 says, Keep thee far from a false matter. In other words, Satan will lie to you about this. And the innocent and righteous slay not, for I will not justify the wicked. Now, is it not true that the child that's inside the womb, they cannot speak for themselves? Am I right? Amen. They can't talk. They can't speak for themselves. They're not out of the womb yet. Proverbs 31, 8 says, Open thy mouth for the silent. They use the word dumb. When you look it up, it means silent. It means speechless. Open thy mouth for them. For in the cause of all, they are appointed unto destruction. In other words, there's already a plan to see them destroyed. He's saying, it's, we have to open our mouth about these things. We're not supposed to be silent. No matter what crowd we're in. Psalm 139, verse 13 and 14. Thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I'll praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, that my soul knows right well. You may not like who you are and the way you look, but you're made up in the image of God. Amen. We have no right to destroy it. A human being made in the very image of God. It's no wonder. No wonder Satan hates us. Right. We're made in the image of God, who he hates. Yeah. Jesus said they hated me before they hated you. Amen. Amen. You're hated today if you're a believer. Right. Well, I don't feel like much hatred than, than uh, you got your head in a bucket. Right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I thought about these passages as Last night we were inside the gym and I saw every kind of critter you could think of. <laughs> Amen. I saw two dinosaurs having fun. I saw some dressed up. I, I don't know what some of them were. Amen. <laughs> uh, I saw some, some princesses, little girls dressed up like a princess. Absolutely just captured my heart. And then two things happened. It made me think. I don't know how much Lena likes cookies. He brought a cookie for me, and he brought one for my wife. I'm thankful he didn't choose a portion, and that little boy's here to bless us. Amen. Amen. It's just a cookie, really, Mike. Not one to me. His little boy giving his pastor something. Amen. 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 I can't eat it right now, but I'm going to save it to it. I don't know what's going to happen to it, but I'll eventually get to it. I'm having to watch my sugar, but it ain't going nowhere. And I dare somebody try to take it away from me. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And then Nora grabbed my heart last night. She comes and gives me a hug. Thank God the decision to have her still be born. Amen. And all the other kids that are so special to us here. God said children are a heritage of the Lord and the fruit of the womb is his reward, not punishment. You're rewarded with a child. Treat them that way. But please, if you're sitting here and nobody knows it but you and you're expecting, don't dare obey Satan and destroy that child. Amen. Don't do that. Amen. Because there's a blessing waiting for somebody down the road that you don't know anything about right now. God has special plans. Well, what do you say there in the book of Jeremiah? He said, I ordain thee to be a prophet unto the nations. There's a message going to come out of that child. We have no right to destroy it. That's right. So you either agree with God's word or you agree with darkness. No matter what age you are, sometimes you wear dark clothing, and I do. I, I think we all we all think it makes us look skinnier. <laughs> <laughs> but we're not. We're just wearing black. Amen. 
But there's something to darkness that, that we don't see sometimes. The wrong kind of darkness that comes from Satan. And where in the world, where in the world did the idea to rip a mother's womb open to take a child out of it? It came from hell, you all. It came from Satan himself. Yeah. Sure you not understand. I hope you understand that. If you vote against this a moment, if you vote no, you're agreeing with hell itself. Amen. John 8, 44, he said, You're your father of the devil. The lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own for he is a liar and the father of it. Yeah. Satan is behind abortion. And if you vote no, then you agree with hell itself. You remember that as you head to the ballot. We want you to know what the Word of God says today, not what some politician says, yeah. not what some policy is. Yeah. We want you to know what the Word of God says today. Yeah. Is there hope for you if you see things from Darkness. You see, if you're lost, you, you may be voting as a lost person. So you haven't seen the light of God to open up your eyes to what's real. The Bible says that God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ will shine unto you. Satan wants to keep you blinded to the truth. Amen. Acts 26, 18 says, Jesus said, He's come to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light. And from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness. Listen, there's hope for you if you're lost today. Listen to it. That you may receive forgiveness of your sins and an inheritance amongst an inheritance among them which were sanctified by faith. Jesus says that is in me. Listen, no matter what you've done, where you've been, how you voted in the past, how you behave, and listen to me, even if you have an abortion. God said, I'll change your life Amen. from the light that I'm going to place in you, and it's going to overwhelm that darkness. Have you ever noticed how light penetrates darkness? Have y'all ever noticed that? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. I've got the tiniest light that, that's built into my hunting sock dog, and I go out in pitch darkness, and it's so tiny, it literally <coughs> lights up my path so I know where to go and how to go. Gee whiz, that's light. That's God saying, that's God saying, I'm going to show you how to go. I'm going to show you how to live. I'm going to show you how to vote. I'm going to show you how to do everything that you need to do. Yeah. So, well, Brother Mike, you really don't need to be in the business, in the political field. I'm not in the political field. Yeah. I've been called to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. I've been called to preach the truth. Amen. Oh, yeah. And, Doug, every time I preach it, Hope well, I always end up, I love you enough to tell you the truth. Amen. By the way, it's an inside joke. I called him Charlie when he came in. <laughs> Amen. His name is Doug. I did call you the wrong name, didn't I? About a couple weeks ago. What did I call you anyway? Chuck. Chuck. Don't y'all like Chuck better? <laughs> I go to the courthouse lunch. <laughs> That light changes how we see things. Mm -hmm. It's my sure Chuck's name on that wrong too. Yes. No Doug. Yeah. My sure Chuck's name. Yes, sir. <laughs> if you don't see things different after you, after you think that you've been saved and you're not saved, if you don't see things agreeing with the light, then you need to be saved. Amen. That's a right. challenge. Right. Amen. Yeah. If I don't see things that way, Brother Mike, then you need to get saved. The Word of God makes it real plain how we're supposed to see things. Through light, not darkness. So why can't I just stay neutral about this? Why can't I just, as my dad said one time, it's none of your business, Al. Why don't they pull that curtain up? Well, it's God's business. Yeah. It's God's business. Yeah. 2 Corinthians 5.10. This is talking about the uh, judgment seat of Christ. We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body according that he's done, whether it's good or it's bad. 
Well, this is my private decision. Wrong. What I do doesn't affect anyone else. Wrong. Amen? Amen. God proves it. Turn to Romans 14. Verse 7 through 12. Romans 14, verses 7 through 12. I love hearing old pages, son. Bring your Bibles. Yeah. Yeah. None of us lives to himself, and no man dies to himself. This isn't all about you. Whether we live, we live unto the Lord. Whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live or die, we are the Lord. Yeah. He's talking about the judgment that's coming. Yeah. For to this end, look what Christ did for us. He both died. He died on a cruel Roman cross, paid for our sin debt, not his. He rose. Who did he rise for? Yeah. Ourself. Yeah. And revived that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. And in verse 10, why do you judge your brother with a question mark? Why do you reduce to nothing or set it not, thy brother? For we'll all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. I hope y'all understand what that means. Every decision that we make after we've been saved, now this isn't talking about the great white throne judgment where the lost are, are judged. This is for Christians, believers. For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue confess to God. Amen. Now I want to make sure you understand verse 12. And this message isn't going to last a whole lot longer. So that every one of us should give account of himself. Well, let me help you with that right there. Here we are. Amen. Every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Amen. Your organization that you belong to, they will not be standing with you at judgment day. That's right. At the judgment seat of Christ. That's right. Your friend that you've listened to, and been led astray, they won't be with you. The politician that you put your sign in the yard, or his sign in the yard, and you just hang on every word that he says, he won't be standing with you. Your teachers won't be standing with you. The businessman that you work for that's pressuring you to vote a certain way, he won't be standing with you. You will, by yourself, stand before a holy, righteous, and a perfect God. Amen. And answer... For these things. Amen. I'll tell you what I'm claiming, y'all. I'm claiming the blood of Jesus Christ Amen. that saved me yeah. and changed me. That I don't vote like the world. I try not to act like the world, even though I do sometimes. Yeah. So your decision does affect others. <coughs> And everyone else. And every unborn child. And more importantly than all those things, your decision affects God. Is He going to be pleased with you? Or is He going to grieve His heart? Because you chose do the wrong thing. Listen to me again. As the sign says, vote yes. Amen. Anybody get that? Amen. Vote yes. Vote yes. By providence of God, we, the citizens of the United States of America, but even more important, that very, very personal to us, the citizens of the state of Kentucky, again, we are the only ones of all the states of the union that have this opportunity. Nobody else has this opportunity but us today. To vote on November 8th. Nobody. I think I, I, I'll tell you what, it's a lot more special now for me to live in Kentucky than I've ever felt special. To be able to do something about what's wrong. James 2.17, in closing. 
Here's what he said. Even so faith, if it has not worked, it's dead. Being alone. But yea. Verse 18. A man may say thou hast faith, but I have works. You show me thy faith without thy works, and here it is, y'all. Yeah. Maybe I could have just read this right here, and you guys can, can leave early. I'll show thee my faith by my works. Yeah. Do something about it. The Bible says, don't be just hearers of the word, but doers of the word. Amen. You've heard what the word of God says about these things. It's time to do something about these things. Amen. Amen? Amen. If you're neutral about this, you need to search your heart today. Mm -hmm. And it's the only message I'll bring about this is today. And God forbid that you sit here lost today. If you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior. This darkness that you embrace, well, that's where you'll spend eternity. You spend it in hell itself if you don't ask Christ into your heart. The Bible said that the darkness in hell itself is just like a wet fog. You can't see through it. You won't be having communion with those others of you that are lost in this place called hell. You'll be more alone than you've ever been in your life. The Bible calls it the mists of darkness. If you don't know Christ, you need to come on the first stanza when they have an invitation. Amen. And if you need to make a commitment before God and before this congregation to lay your boat down the way that God's instructed you to, this, this altar is welcome for you. If you've had an abortion or if you've helped somebody else go get one, by the way, that's happened a lot. I've dealt with that in my own community where other folks have taken other folks to get an abortion right in downtown Simpsonia, Kentucky. It happens here too, you all. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Sure, you're not so naive that you would think that it doesn't happen here. It does. Amen? If the Holy Spirit's moving on you today to pray about these things, I believe prayer works. Yeah. Prayer changes things. All of these groups that represent the Christian vote, the Christian walk, the Christian life, they've been praying for a long time for this, and God's opened up this door for us. Just do what God tells you to do today. If you want to come pray for someone, pray for each other. Do what God tells you to do. And I'll get out of your way.